she too covers it with a pressing cloth. She has discovered with her old eyes that a medium gray solid fabric works great for seeing the edges of light fabrics and makes lining up the seams so much easier. So Shelly, thank you for writing this to me because I was kind of shooting in the dark when I was answering. Okay, before we get to fusibles, if you are of the grand family, <laughs> and I know I know Wendy's not watching because she's taking her mom to the dentist, I want to show you where I am with the thing that I'm giving baby Jay on the baby shower on Sunday. I hope I can attend. I'm getting my shot, my second shot on Friday. So here's where I am. I got the J, this hanky from Cindy Needham. And of course her show is airing right now. And I did, as she said, I started with the bottom layer and I made a, I did a big boo-boo. This is a really fine linen and I forgot to, oh no. No, I did. Okay, I thought I forgot to put fabric um, prep on it, but I did. And I marked it with, um, well, you got to watch the show, but you mark it with a friction pin. I free, I freehand drew these little feathers. And I mean, look at the size of this. And then I put in the, the background um, grid. Then for, she says you do the, the main dancers first, then you fill in the background. Again, watch the show. I am hooked on these things. So then I drew this double wreath around here and I go really slow on my sewing machine. And then using her templates, she has a bunch of these great little templates. I used this one in order to get this basket weave. And I simply did it by turning it and then marking it and then going in and filling in the line. So that's how I did that. And then I went around the J and around this here then for the top, I used these clamshells up here. And again, you just mark it and then you go and you, um, with your friction pin, and then you sew it all up and then you steam it to get it out, the, the ink to get it out. Oh, down here for these lines, I used this template and I just would mark them and then shift them, okay? So here's the thing. She has these actually in all different sizes, but she did put together a little girl set for us. I am now going to probably put pearls in here, but I have to get this done before Wednesday because I'm going to meet up with Wendy and drop it off. And then I made my own little uh, template in order to square things up. Now this is disconcerting to me because the J is a little bit crooked, but that's the way it was with the hanky and that stuff happens because these weren't perfect. Let me tell you one other thing. This one I know I've shown you in the past and try not to get a reflection. And I actually put an iron down on this and this burned and like it scorched in a matter of seconds, which is why now I go to steaming. I almost want to throw up because there it was. I got it out with white vinegar just by dabbing, 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 dabbing. I've also learned that you can get it out with um, hydrogen peroxide and you just dab, 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 dab. I mean, it was instantaneous that this thing scorched. So that did not make me a happy camper. And last but not least, if you have old linens that you wanna clean, this stuff is really good. Uh, we will have it in the store as soon as we have the new store open, which is, I hope, from my lips to God's ears, very, 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 very soon. So that is really cool, but I wanted to share that. I just think this turned out so precious. I can't stand it. All right, enough about what's going on here. Today, let me get back on this camera. Today, I said we would be talking about uh, fusibles and in, in lieu of finished applique. And so why do I use fusibles in lieu of finished applique? I do if, let's say I have a project and I want to get it done down and dirty. I do, um, I do, well, let me show you. Well, I just use it if I don't want to take the time to do finishing and or it's not applicable, okay? So there are a ton of fusibles out there, but basically they fall into 
two different camps, all right? One is a thicker fusible and it's repositionable. In my product line, it's called Applestick, okay? Uh, a cousin of it, or what I used before we developed Applestick was steam seam And I would use this because I would be working on my design wall. So let's take a look here. And I'm fashioning things. I want to get that vine just right. And you can see on the left, I've pinned everything. But then what I will do is I will fuse it on the wall using my um, cordless iron. So that would be hard to lay, um, oh, uh, if you had a hard time getting on today, just go back and watch the beginning and catch up with now. So, because I think everything I have to say is so remarkable, you can't miss a minute. <laughs> oh, help me, I'm in a mood today. <laughs> get, get rid of this one thing. Ah, hold on, I'm having a hard time here. Oh, let me get rid of that. There we go. So if I want to lay things out on the design wall, it will stick to it. And then I will go and iron it. And then it will temporarily hold it. This is the Apple stick. And then I will go stitch it down. Now I want to show you how heavy it is. It, it's very, very heavy. And it's the nature of the beast and that is even the same with steam -a seam and i said to Kay, who is our product development person why can't we get a super fine one and she said because it just doesn't work you need to have it to be this really really thick and so it's not a problem on it if you're doing one or two layers but it can become a problem if you can't peel <laughs> ah i just want to show you how thick it is let me try it with this. And I'll actually do a little demo on it. I mean, this stuff is thick, people, and it's super, super sticky. So how you use this is this. I have here this heart template, all right? And I want to do this. So what I, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, with a felt tip pen, draw along the outside. Again, this is repositionable, sticking on your design wall, pressing, and then sewing it down. So I do that, and then I cut it out rough, all right? So let me just cut this out. I'm at a very odd angle, excuse me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse it to this particular piece of fabric. This is part of the set that we're going to be selling pretty soon that has to go with the next project. But here's the thing. If I had to do multiple layers, I might consider doing this. And it would be cutting out the inside. All right. So let's do that. Again, Another product would be steam -a seam One of the things I love about our products is this, there's a secret ingredient in it so that it doesn't gum up your needle. You know how, how if you use these things and your needles get gummy, you have to go take, um, what's it called? Like, oh, brain freeze, someone help me out here. Alcohol pads and clean off your needle. With our products, you don't, and this is Quilter Select. I'm going to trim this off a little bit. Now, all irons are different. I've had this talk with you before. If I go into a store and buy a Rowenta, and you go, well, I'm going to get one if she gets one, you, my Rowenta and your Rowenta are going to be different, even if it's the same darn box and you buy it right after mine, because the different parts of the Rowenta or whatever iron are sourced from different areas. And so my medium may not be your medium. You have to learn how to get the sweet spot on your iron. Typically with Quilter Select, we say start with a medium iron, all right? You can crank it up a little bit hotter if you want, but, and I'd say this is true with all fusibles. You've got to find the sweet spot on your iron. And I'm waiting for a moment for my little Panasonic to get hot. And also for, 
Always read the instructions, always, all right? So we're almost there, there we go. Without steam, I'm gonna go here. One, two, three. Oh, I think we have some gold models of these in the store that have come in. You couldn't even get your hands on these for a while, these irons. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, now the key with all fusibles, all, is you must let it cool. You must let it cool before you start trying to peel off the paper or whatever. But in the meantime, while it's cooling, maybe if I move my body, I'll be better off here, yeah. I'm gonna cut this out. There we go. Now you could, say, fuse some of this stuff on the back of fabric and run it through your go cutter and that works fine and then get rid of the paper that's holding it right now. All right, <clears throat> so is it cool yet? Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now I had it here and it's missing, there we go. I take a pin and rather than try to pick it off the edge, I take my pin and I go like that and then off it comes. If you try and peel it off before it cools, it's not gonna work. All right, so again, I use this when I'm working on my, des um, oh, that was Sparrow, she scared me. When I'm working on my design wall because it will stick. Here. There, it stuck to me right there, all right? But let's say you're doing a pattern and and you're working flat, okay? The other kind of fusibles that are out there are very, very lightweight. For instance, like Jamie Fingal uses Misty Fuse. In fact, I even have some here that uh, she had, she gave us, I think at Craft Napa. Very, 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 very fine. Quilter Select has one that's called um, Apple, Apple Web Plus. It is a very, very fine, meshy, whoops, meshy um, fab, um, fusible that is on paper also. And you can do several layers of this. You do it, fuse it the exact same way I just showed you. You can do several layers of this before it gets super um, thick and stiff, all right? Again, it does not gum up your needles. So this, I think, is like the number one seller that we have. It's just lovely. We used to sell it not with paper, kind of like how Misty Fuse comes, but now we sell it just with paper, and that's why it's called Plus, Apple Web Plus. If you go somewhere and you see Apple Web, just understand you're buying the webbing without the paper on it. Okay, so why, why, let me show you some examples of what I might use with what, okay? So, <clears throat> I guess that can come off, right? I mean, that's really on there. Oh, the other thing is with the Apple Web Plus, it's permanent. You don't have to stitch it down. I would stitch it down, but you don't have to. Um, I would stitch it down. <laughs> so, for instance, this is a fused quilt that I did 100 years ago about Door County. And I think by the feel of, well, I had to have used steam seam because that's all it was. So let me hold this up. It's about little scenes in Door County, Wisconsin. And I would make a little area, like let's just say Adair on the right on lawnmower and Joey behind with the dog chasing him. And I would use it all down. And this is hand blanket stitched. I literally, because I was on a deadline, sat and would stitch at stoplights, all right? And I stitched by hand. Now, it was a little tough to stitch through because some of this is kind of a heavy denim -y stuff, right? But now what I would use is I would use the um, Apple Web Plus and it would be very easy to needle through. So then here's another quilt that I had to use, Apple Stick, working on the wall because I was designing this as I went. This is from a Rosalie Dace class, all right? So I had to use the Apple Stick and there aren't a ton of layers on it, so, so that's fine. And also, it was very rough on the edge, 
and it is it I wanted it to look um, scraggly on the edge so I just kind of picked at it and let it get scraggly I love this this was uh, Rosalie's class called branching out and I call this quilt first snow I even put crystals on it which I kind of are against my religion but I did okay now here is when I used Apple web plus this is a quilt that I made for um, A Better World that Lyric and Susan Braubaker put on an exhibit in Houston. And I chose my dad. It is, oops, it is silk, all right? It's silk pieced and stuff, but he was my anchor. And this is a silk organza at the bottom that, that I have appliqued on. You know what, and then the stars, these are, silk organza too let me put the camera on so i can get the document on so you can see it and in this case i wanted to use the apple web plus because it's so darn sheer you can see right through it and then how i applied it as i think i just did a simple zigzag out of a clear monopoly so if i had used the apple stick on this the heavier one I wouldn't have gotten these results, all right? Oh, and then this, I put the little sequins and beads on after I quilted the whole thing. And I just quilted right through, right through. Let's take a look at the anchor. So it's an organza. And even here, I, it wasn't big enough. I had to piece it, and it doesn't really show at all. So people will ask, what usable do I, what fusible should I use? And you have to look at what are you trying to do? I mean, that you, you obviously with the silk, I had to use something uber sheer. And if I'm working on my design wall, I've got to use, some, and it's raw edge, I've got to use something that is, um, will stick. And the other thing is when you're doing raw edge applique, and if you are doing a vine border, all you have to do is fuse the stuff on the back of the fabric, of course, let it cool, and then on the bias, cut it. And believe it or not, it will move for you. It will move. So, it, and it will, it will um, curve beautifully for you. In fact, the holiday project that we did, that's what I used. Okay, is the shiny side of the fusible down on the back of the fabric? No, the shiny side of the, there's a paper side, and there's a shiny side, all right? The paper side is what you're looking at. The other side is what's down against the fabric, all right? So let's go back to this camera. I love being here with you guys, I just do. So in both cases, this, this is the one I'm gonna draw on. I'm gonna draw my heart, and then I, I should kind of tore it off. And then this is the side, I guess that is the shiny side. Yeah, the shiny side is the side that's got the product. I never thought of it that way. You're exactly right. That was Apple Web. See, okay, see in this case, the paper is shinier on the um, Apple stick. So just the regular paper is what you're gonna be looking at. And then the other side is what goes against your uh, fabric. Now listen, if it doesn't stick, Let's just say for some reason it doesn't stick. You start to score it and it's like not doing its thing. Just stop, don't freak out. And then just press it again, all right? So don't worry about that. Now, I hope I'm looking for questions. Now, I have to tell you something that happened yesterday that was really kind of horrible. Um, yesterday was a full day in our neighborhood. Uh, we back on to a school, you know, um, and we there's um, animals back there and all that. It's super cool. Well, that's another case of well, if one person complained, they'd have to get rid of those animals. And those animals, the kids feed them, they go to that school. It's a whole experience. We've got four goats, two pigs, and a ton of chickens. So anyways, John, the kids were coming over to play back there. And John went out and there was a kid that was in distress, a, a young man in his 20s. And, and what... Um, we ended up, he, John was talking to him and John said, do you want help? And he said, yes. And John said, I'm going to call the police if that's okay with you. He said, yes, I need to get to the hospital. I need my meds. So the kid was clearly distressed. 
Long story short, we ended up with two fire trucks, four cop cars, an ambulance in our front yard, and the neighbors were like, oh my gosh. So in the meantime, and they did find, they found the kid. The crazy thing is his parents were driving down the street. I don't know his parents, but another person went whoosh, and then they came and got the kid. And, uh, or they, whatever they found him. My daughter took off on, his, on her scooter looking for him and all that, you know. I mean, the kid was really in bad shape. And so in the meantime, I'm doing my Sunday meeting with Meryl and Wendy Grand. And Adair said to the kids, get inside. And so they're inside. And now I'm out trying to find the kid. And I come in. <laughs> Lennox is on the Zoom with Wendy and Meryl. You know? And she said, oh, look what Bubby's working on. <laughs> it started my show and tell. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a teaser. I am working on the border now. I mean, I am having a flipping ball. And these are finished applique. These are finished applique. <laughs> and at one point, the kids are running around the backfield. And the police goes, where's the adult? <laughs> John's off here. The tears on the scooter like a maverick. <laughs> God. But they found him. They found him. And that goes back to my little town. I mean, you know, when my parents moved here, I was, I say zero or maybe half. Maybe I was a half before a one. <laughs> and and it was 7,000 and now it's probably 90,000 and it still has the feel of a small town. Our neighborhood is the best, the absolute best. And I, you know, my parents have this wonderful house that I think a lot of people would kill to move into. Mm -mm, I love, I, maybe my song should be my little neighborhood. I just love my neighborhood. So I don't know, I am hoping John has brought in questions. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, purchase my quilt pattern on my left. I wish I could purchase that quilt pattern on my left. Color my world. Yes. Oh, thank you for saying that, Barbara. You can. As soon as the new site gets up. Yeah, I don't think it's in the store as it is. Um, it's part of the benefits of being a member of thequiltshow.com. Now, you have to go along and do it monthly with us. We're not going to just hand it over. But I think um, after the new site up, it's $49 or something for the entire year. John, it's not in the store right now, is it? Color My World? No. It'll it'll be up. And, and if you guys are upset that the website's taking long, just take that times a million. And that's how we're all feeling. Um, the other thing I want to say, too, is that when it does go live, because really we're on Christmas Eve here, um, please be kind to us. <laughs> You're our beta testers. You're our betas, okay? Please. It's like one thing will be fixed on Saturday, and then the next day, what what happened? So, um, yes, that is by Wendy Williams, the quilt behind me. And the reason it's up is I did an interview with her that I'll be sharing this Friday from Down Under. So that was great. Um, I will. Yes, it does. I still love Livermore. You've been here that long too, Rondi, right? Yeah, yeah. I love this little town. Well, little, whatever. So, okay, everybody. I want to wish you a great day. I, I got to go. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm going to go get my car washed. I can't wait. I mean, it's only been a year. <laughs> so, anyways. Okay, guys. I, oh, sometimes, Margo, thank you for saying this. When you're doing fusibles, if you want the bird to be going this way, understand you have to reverse the image when you trace it on, okay? Because it's in reverse. A heart, it doesn't matter because no matter how you swing the heart, you're gonna be fine. But if it has a direction, trace it backwards on the paper. Thank you so much. And Shelly, I see you here. And thank you for um, taking care of telling us about uh, the mats and the and your products and all that. So, okay, have a great day. I'm so excited. I'm going to get a clean car. How's about that? And John says he wants to be married another 45 years. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't want to be around that long. <laughs> but I'll take more, all right? I'll be like my parents, 65. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.